we're just having a cup of coffee at a consultation and we've already gone yeah. through a lot of this stuff and be like, Phil, all right, we're in, in role play now. Phil, I've, everything you said is awesome, but I just really don't understand the logic of buying right now at a, you know, with interest rates being at 7%, six, six and the three quarters or whatever it is. You know, I, I really don't understand why now would be the best time to buy. Gotcha. Gotcha. And where are you living again right now? Just remind me that. I live in Philadelphia. Okay. And do you own that home or are you renting? No, I'm renting right now. So, yeah. Okay. And, and and how long do you see yourself staying in that rental? Well, I've been here. I got divorced uh, about four years ago. So I've been here since then. So, um, you know, I, I don't know exactly, but I got the lease at least for another six months and I'll have to make a decision what to do. And do you love it? It's yeah, I'm a, I'm a bachelor. Like it, it works, you know? uh it does the job for sure like i'm i'm not uh you know do i love it no but it's it, it's also pretty good like like i said i've been here four years so it's not killing me to be in this house in any way like you know but it's good i mean there's many that could argue that, that renting forever is is a viable option is that the sort of thing that you'd like to do with the future in your life I mean, you know, the, oh, you know, the fear of like, oh my God, getting the call, I have to move is always like in the back of my mind. Do you know what I mean? So I, think- I, I get you. I get you. And I, and I think that's why a lot of people actually look to move into a place that they own, right? It's just for safety and security and to feel like they're in control. Yeah. And I, yeah, that's partly why I reached out to you too. You know, it's like this fear I had that the landlord's going to call me any minute and be like, hey, you know what you got your you got to be out of there in 60 days or i sold it to someone or you know what i mean that's always that phone call could come through at any time well let's play this out like how important is it to you that you own your own home at some point in time in the future it's pretty important you know especially like getting divorced you know it's almost like that thing where it's like feels like it's getting back onto my feet in some ways right like i've recovered i'm there etc so there's almost an emotional component to it I get it. But like on a on a scale of one to 10, with 10 being it needs to happen and one being it's just a cute idea, how important is homeownership? Um, homeownership to me in the next six months, I would probably say is a seven. Like it's okay. important, but it, you know, it's not a 10. Like yeah. I have to be in the house. Like I got that phone call. Okay. And if not in the next six months, like what sort of timeline could be an alternative? God, 18 months, right? Like, so you figure my lease renews in six months for another year. So you but, might roll uh, again for a year and then just cross your fingers that the, the you know, 18 months off from is better. Okay. Right. So if you were to wait, what are you waiting for? But where to wait? Um, you know, once again, it's sort of like I feel, I keep on hearing like I should wait for interest rates to come down. Okay. You know what I mean? Because of the fact like they they've doubled in the last months or nine months or so and everyone i talked to about buying a house are like don't buy right now you know i have a three percent rate why would you buy at a seven percent rate you're right i mean there's a lot of chatter right a lot of chatter about about interest rates right now it's hard to know what to do yeah okay so let's just keep searching around this because i think it's important that, that what happens is when you make a decision you know the decision's right for you would you agree agreed okay um answer me this quickly is, is, is how long do you see yourself living in this neighborhood? I love the neighborhoods. I definitely would. I, this is the neighborhood I would buy in. So, okay. you know, definitely the spot. But, but would you be here for two years, five years, 10 years? Like, like what are you foreseeing? These are 10, at the minimum, eight years. Okay. Minimum. This is a serious long-term commitment. You're not okay. trying to buy a house for the weekend. No, no, no. This is not like a one or two years and I'm going to play around and stuff like that. This is my kids commitment. are, you know, fifth grade through when they graduate from high school at the very, very least. Do you know what I mean? Okay. And, and what do you see happening to your income over the you know months and years ahead? Is, is your career potential going yeah. this way, or are you going this way? Yeah. What are, what yeah, I'm working think? for a great company called Compass, and uh, you know they're 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 starting to really really turn things around, and I see a really bright future ahead. So you know I, I don't have a crystal ball, but I I but you're foreseeing it going up, and you're not you're not immediately worried about the fact that you're going to be without a job in the coming weeks. Yeah. No, not in the least bit. Pretty safe on your income. Yeah. Okay, um, and. You could afford um, down payment and a, and a yep. mortgage payment despite the interest yeah, rate. Yeah, after four years, I'm like sort of I'm ready. Do you know what I mean? If I did, if I had to do it today, I have the the cash to buy. Um, I have the income to buy and everything like that. I think it's just this ever fear of these interest rates. Do you know what I mean? And the news I keep hearing. So you're just trying to time it right from an interest rates point of view. Correct. Yep. Okay. Let's just give this a further thought. Let's just say we do wait 18 months. 
What do you think the interest rates could drop by? Like one percent, one and a half percent? What are we? What are we? What are yeah, we like planning for? I'm, I mean, looking at some historical data. Like, I'm not an expert for sure, but looking at historical data, it looks like you know that five to six. Well, six percent seems to be that number that is would be considered a good rate historically. Okay, and, and you're probably you know looking at around seven right now. Yeah, that's where I, a couple of days ago. That's where uh, my mortgage guy said I was at. Okay, so we're looking for this this whole one percent interest right. rate drop. Got it. Um, and and price point you're buying at is around a million dollars. Yeah, million. You know, you go a little above, a little below, but you know that's sort of the target. Somewhere in around a million. Yeah. So that 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 percentage point is going to cost you how much a year if that was to drop down? God, I don't even know. Uh, God, I I should probably know that answer, but I, I honestly don't know, Phil. Like. Well, okay. Yeah. I mean, you're probably talking about somewhere like 150, 160 bucks a month for your payment, maybe 250 tops. Oh, really? Huh. I didn't know that. So uh, you, you, you're not you're not talking massive, but let's keep keep playing this out. Is sure. Sure. Um, if the interest rates to drop, do you think that'll put more buyers or less buyers in the market? It's a good question. It you know what? It probably put a lot more buyers. In the market, because I I'm not the only one looking to buy that's like sort of holding off right now. And this is a pretty desirable area to live. Really, yeah, yeah. A lot of people want to. It's a great school, you know. Every yeah, you know, neighborhoods, restaurants, shops, all everything you want is here. So increased competition could be problematic. <laughs> you, it wouldn't be good, probably, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, I keep on hearing. Yeah, I've heard about two years ago the mobile bids and all this stuff that my my friends yeah. went. How much would you look forward to playing that game? Not much. I wish I was the only buyer. <laughs> and also, not only that, is like you've got this potential competitive buying environment that is is more challenging for a buyer to actually get the house that they would like. But yeah. not only that, is, is what do you think it will end up doing to the property prices if interest rates were to drop? Yeah. I mean, if there's more comp- you know, classic law of supply and demand, theoretically, they they probably go up if there's a lot of demand. Okay. And it don't take a lot for a million dollar property to go to 1.1 to 1.2. Like they don't go a million and 25,000. No. They no. start to jump by another hundred, another $200,000. That's right. So let's get this right. You'd like to own a home at some point. You're either going to do it in the next six months or you're going to wait another 12 months. Waiting another 12 months is highly likely that even if interest rates do drop, going to result in you spending more money. You're in a position to be able to do so now. You're in a strong buying position. There are fewer buyers in the market. There's more chance for you to actually be able to get a deal or at least be able to get the house that you want at this given moment in time and that you don't love the place that you're currently living in. (laughs) Um, Explain to me what you're thinking about potentially maybe wasting. Honestly, Phil, that's a great point. I you know, I don't know why. I just, I, yeah, I don't know why I'm waiting. I think it's just this fear of the chatter I keep hearing, right? The news, but it. it. Right. And how much is the chatter just just around in life being right? And how much of it is just scary? So, I, I don't know if you know anything about getting divorced, but the chatter around getting divorced is like great. So I can almost relate it back to then, like, oh my God, don't do it. It's going to be horrible. And I have a great co parenting relationship and everything worked out great. Yeah. I mean, there are a number of circumstances that that waiting for interest rates to drop could be the right decision for for, for certain individuals. But it sounds like your unique circumstances that the high interest rates could actually be advantageous to you. <laughs> I never. That is so awesome. You said that. I never thought about how high interest rates are actually an advantage. Well, because you're in a strong buying position, right? And you look at this from your point of view. You've told me that you're. You're confident that your salary is strong for the foreseeable future, is that you're not planning on going anywhere. Like the interest rates plummet. Well, guess what? Sky's in a strong position, working with a great loan officer. You'll have the ability to be able to refinance at that given point. But I wouldn't want to bank on it. Just know that if interest rates plummet, happy days, right? You refinance, but you're refinancing at today's price point. Yeah. Wait, get a 6% rate, pay 1.2 for a million dollar house. Yeah. You well, trying to save yourself six thousand dollars could cost you a hundred grand. That, Phil, this is actually really brilliant. And I think the other nice thing too is because I don't have to make a decision today on renting again, I could actually spend the next three months really 
trying to look. And if I find the right thing in the next three months, great. And if I don't, then I could default to the rental again. You know, I, I, yeah. I mean, certainly no pressure from my side. You, you do you. You do what yeah. you think is right. Wow, this is awesome, uh, Phil. Thank you so much for just reframing wow. it. So, Sabrina, hopefully that was a good role playing. That was I, excellent. Yeah. There's, there's some <laughs> lessons in there though that I want people to catch. Yeah, one is entire detachment from the outcome. Mm. I'm not pushing or pressuring Sky into doing anything. I'm exploring all the angles because there are certain circumstances where the worst thing in the world for him to do would be to give up his rental. If he's like, I'm sure that I'm going to be in Philly for the next 18, 24 months, but in truth, I'm probably then going to be moving to California to be back near my parents. I'll be like, suck it up, buttercup, keep the rental. Let's see if we can find you something across in Cali right now, rent that out for two years, have it waiting for you. Mm -hmm. Right. Like that would be the play that would take on that. But it is detaching yourself from the outcome is important. Yeah. Secondly, being slow enough to work through the questions to help somebody reach a position of confidence in their decision making. Yeah. Is I look to all of the open loops that could be existing in this guy's mind. Why? Because he wants to feel smart, capable, and good about his decision. Yeah. Doesn't want to feel pressured, doesn't want to feel told. He wants to feel empowered that he's got enough information to make a decision. He comes away from this conversation going, ha ha, look at all those other fools waiting for the interest rates to drop. How stupid. <laughs> he comes away from this conversation saying, well, actually, he holds the power to be able to actually make a decision that is empowering his own life. And he also knows at the end of it, he's going to feel pretty darn good about it. That's how people make big, bold decisions. And our job right now is to be professional mind maker uppers. And if you Love ever you to understand it. why it's important to know your words, there was an example. That to me was child's play. 